are going to review uh, a handful of the store exclusive variants that came out uh, during the month of April. Um, I want to be clear um, that this is not a buy list. This is not a recommendation list. Uh, this is a list of books that caught our eye. Uh, speculating on store, uh, store exclusives is super expensive, uh, something we recommend that you guys uh, tread very lightly with. Um, by no means um, buy all of these books. Um, uh, that said, uh, there are some cool books that come out month to month, and we felt it made sense to touch on a handful of them. So we're going to get started. All right. So the first book uh, we have on the list this week is Something is Killing the Children, number 16, um, by Ji Hung Lee. The first thing I'd say about <laughs> this book is that there are a lot, a lot of store exclusives, 20, 30, 40, I don't know. Uh, there, there's more than I've seen in a long time. Um, what I will say about this book is that you had to order this book initially blind. Ji Hong Lee did not say uh, what the cover was, um, but there would be a foil in a trade dress. This was released about a week ago, um, the cover art. And I've got to tell you, I was completely blown away. Um, this is one of the best covers I've seen in a long time. Uh, full disclosure, I'm a huge, huge fan of the artist. Um, but this cover absolutely floored me when I saw it. I'm not sure if anybody else has any thoughts on this book. But um, but one that I did buy. And uh, I'm happy to have my collection. I, I so think it is, a, it is a great cover. I the the thing that pushes me off of buying it is undisclosed sale numbers. Uh, this issue, there's a ton of store variants for it. It's a very anticipated issue. Look it up in Diamond. Diamond tells you all you need to know. The hair in this thing, though, that's the thing that really kind of just throws me off a little bit. I agree. Ji Hong Lee has just been killing the covers. The hair just seems like more of a helmet to me than natural like reaction to the action that's going on. Because it's very much a, I'm right here, it's in your face, this is an action shot. The hair just seems like a helmet to me because it's so digital. So yeah. that's, my, that's the only thing I got against it. I think that's fair. I, I will say that, frankly, Frankie's needs to get with what I believe is industry best practice in releasing print runs. Um, it really pisses me off that they don't. And uh, they've got their own reasons for not doing it. Uh, but industry standard, if you're asking people to drop 40 or 50 bucks on a set of books, you should be telling them what they're buying into. Absolutely, right? That is best practice. And fuck Frankie's for not doing it. Sorry if you're listening, Frankie's, um, but be better. But is, isn't this Golden Apple? Uh, it is, but Frankie's led. So oh, okay. I have Golden Apple part of this year because it was available. I would be clear. It was available at Golden Apple. The Frankie's sold out. But I, I am nearly certain that Frankie's is the one that led this. Okay. Led this variant, if you will. So... It's a. I listed the availability at Golden Apple because it was still there at the time I put this slide together. Okay. But I believe this is Frankie's who was the store leading the the charge, if you will. I think it's their okay. their name on the back of the book. Yeah, and I've seen um, G Hung Lee with Frankie's at back to back at their booth at Baltimore Comic Con. So that's that's their artist. Um, and yeah, this print run thing has been going on since last year. So not disclosing the numbers. Yeah, it pisses me off as a customer. Um, but we just we're just left guessing. It's a beautiful cover. I agree with you, Ben. Like this is this is amazing. This is as good as it gets for this guy. So great great one. Great good pick. Helmet hair side. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and does she have a ch is is she using a chainsaw? Is that what's going on? Yeah, it's a chainsaw. She's sawing something. You know what? What keeps grabbing my eye is is it looks like the chainsaw has eyes. I don't know what those two things are. 
Uh, <laughs> do you, you see what I see? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, done to you mention it, Steve. I totally see it. I totally yeah. see it. Pick, pick up a chainsaw one time and then. Is, now, I'm not talking about a tree saw. I'm talking about a real chainsaw. We need yeah, you get it's got eyes like 150, that. Did you get a 150 plus? All right. So, staying on the topic of Ji Hong Lee, um, I do, I do, I do love this guy. His, his work is amazing. Uh, this is Batman 108, uh, another Frankie's Comics. Fuck you guys. Now, what I will say about this book that caught my eye um, is. If anybody out there who knows me, I love bubblegum covers. I love them. I love them. I love them. I really do believe they're a thing. Um, and I thought this book was absolutely stunning. What I will say for all those people who requested it, we are going to do a best bubblegum covers list in the next week or so. So please stay tuned. Uh, this book will probably be on it because it's one of my favorites. Um, but... Um, yeah, I had to put this book on the list, despite the fact that it violates one of my cardinal rules of store variants um, of knowing what the print run is. Uh, but I think it's absolutely stunning and um, and just a book I thought was worth talking about. Ben, are you also going to do a list of um, Urkel Pants covers? Because I don't understand why they're up so high. Um, That's a new style, is there, Steve. Is that, I was going to say that, too. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's, what, that's what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay. The Urkel Pants is coming later, but we can talk to Molly about, about that in the interim, Steve, if it makes sense. Okay. I focus I, on I what... Mean, they are high, there are high waisters. Uh, the waist just looks way too big. But I think that is a thing, and... The other part that goes with that, if you want to like get into that scene, that neon in the back, man, that is just popping and it looks yeah. good. Yeah, the Steve, high yeah, waisters aside, right. the high waisters aside, it, it just like everything goes together with the colors, with the character persona. It yeah. is a what great cover. Think, what do you think about the hair on this one, John? <laughs> What do you mean the hair? Yeah, you have a problem with <laughs> you that. You had something to say about the hair on the last Yeah, one. yeah, have an issue with the hair or you know I think it's similar to the one that we saw last um the other slide with something that's killing the children too. Maybe I'm just very specific to each cover about the hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know, you you I would say the last thing like the last cover, something something that's killing the children. There were six thousand, you know, copies of uh, of Batman 108 printed. Um, most of them are frankly underwhelming, but I don't know. I thought this one was particularly stunning, so it made the list this week. Here's snakes right. aside. Miles Morales, Spider-Man number twenty-five. This is a Greg Horn artist exclusive. One thousand print run um this thing's still available um this was bird city comics um who, who also partnered with them on this if i'm not mistaken but uh you know these these comic card covers uh, you know are, are starting to become a thing most of them i haven't liked but this one i thought was pretty well done uh was definitely a throwback to the marvel car uh comic cards from the 1990s and um uh, you know, one that I thought was worth talking about. Yeah, I Anybody thought it was pretty cool. Like, like if you actually collected some of these cards, they actually said rookie on them just like this, even though many people are saying they're not rookie cards, right? Um, because they never, I mean, it's just, they don't have stats, right? Like, like sports <laughs> players. Yeah. Does this one have stats in, behind the, you know, on the back of the cover? Cause usually most of them do. No, I mean, my guess is the back of the cover is like the typical back of these store exclusives or artist exclusives, oh. where it has the store, the artist logo on a gray background, more or less, is my yeah. guess. I was, yeah, I was looking on the, the recent um, issues of what Marvel was doing, um, and I was trying to, I looked on the back and they didn't have any of the stats. Um, you know what does, in, in terms of what you're talking about, there's a number of those John Tyler Christopher 
Oh yeah, that, yeah, that those are yeah, those are great. That on the back of them do actually have stats. Yeah. This one, I, I I would agree, probably doesn't have anything like that. But it's still uh, a great cover. Maybe, maybe number twenty six will be the stat variant, and it's just <laughs> like a bunch of bunch of stats <laughs> on the cover. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it's definitely a great pick, though. I mean, just to have in your PC, you never know what's going to happen with it. It's the first yeah, one, right? Yeah, I mean, I, we've started to see some of these rookie card covers. Some of them, frankly, are terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. I thought the silk one, which I could not bring to put on this list. Oh, was my goodness. That silk slamming the silk basketball. It was terrible, right? I mean, that's <laughs> yikes. Yeah, I will say that last year well, when Ultimate Fallout 4 did pop, I was looking for, like, Miles Morales store variants. I couldn't find one. Like, and then I found the Clayton Crane one. But there's just not many of these um, early on. For just as uh, store exclu for store exclusives, so I mean now we're seeing a big splash of them. Um, but yeah, I'm with all you guys, buy what you like. Good for PC. Yeah, My Miles is going to be as big as it gets, I think, over the next decade. So um, yeah, interesting book, one way or the other. All right, so the next book is another Miles Morales book. Miles Morales, Spider-Man 25, Mike Mayhew by Eastside Comics. Listen, I put this on here because this was the first homage, and by homage, I almost mean a exact recreation of um, Ultimate Comics, Ultimate, Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number one, I believe is what the title that was. Um, this is Miles' second appearance, his first solo title. Um, and, uh, I, I think this is a book that will see homage more going forward. Um, but, um, but, but a cool book and, and uh, I thought it was interesting to throw on the list, but you know, the artist in this case didn't take much, um, in the way of artistic liberties. Uh, it was, it's quite generally almost an exact recreation. Yeah. Same pose. I mean, May Mayhew is actually known for doing that. The thing I will say about him is his when he does actual paintings, they are ridiculously realistic. The thing is he does do the digital 3D, and this feels a little bit like that's probably what this is, and it's basically you create it 3D and, and turn it and pose it, I think, is what he did here, and it's looks amazing. I mean, it's Feels like it's coming out with the shadowing and the the light sources and everything. Feels like it's coming out of the cover. Yeah, I I, I like Mayhew. I think he does really good work. Um, and this cover is really cool. That said, I think the next book, if we can segue to that one, um, is even cooler. So this came out a little bit later. Um, you know, more or less the exact same cover, but we get Miles. More like the Miles that we know and love. He's got some street gear on, right? He's got his bomber jacket and shorts on. And uh, I think this cover is really quite brilliant. I, I know it's not that different than the cover we just talked about, um, but I really, really love love this one. I didn't buy it, um, but I'm certainly considering picking this one up. Yeah, I, I like this one better as well. Even just the uh, the the spider uh, emblem in, in the background, you know, could just adds a, a little something to it. So Miles Morales, 26. All right. So this book I added to the list because it was the first time I recall seeing um, Ultimate Fallout 4, the 1 in 25, the Jervic variant, homaged. Um, I could be wrong there, but I don't recall anybody else ever doing it. Um, and for that reason, I thought it was worthy to throw on the list. Yeah, I wonder. I, I think this is probably the same scan who, who's usually just goes by one one name. I, I know he's done some DC variants, and I've always thought that they've been pretty good. I'm I'm surprised he hasn't gotten more attention. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with the uh, Ultimate Fallout for uh, you know uh, doing something based on on that. So yeah, I mean, I think Scon had that. Um... If I'm not mistaken, 
that null cover that got really popular. Yeah. And there was a debate about his first cover appearance. Okay. Yeah. I believe that was the same artist. Um, yeah. Done a lot of store variants for sure. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, one I, this one I thought was cool. Um, you know, that, that book's an important cover. It's never been homage before. So, um, yeah, this look, looks interesting. I don't think it's anywhere near as good, frankly, as the Djurvik. Jir um, one in 25, but um, we've never well, seen it. The funny part about that is that one is digital as well. Like the original cover is digital. Yep. So I don't know. Take it for what it's worth. Yeah, I, I, I think Scott is kind of like really uh, underrated. Uh, yeah. An underrated artist. He does some really, really good work. This is uh, interesting. He has uh, red bottom shoes. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you only have like two options if you can't afford the one in twenty five. Either you get this one or the La Mole yeah. one. So, yeah, I like yeah, it. it's only do a thousand. So who knows? It could do something. Maybe it could do something. Maybe. All right. Um, next, we have Department of Truth number eight. Um, the Werther uh, Della Dera is these comics um, variant. We, we've seen a lot of Department of Truth variants, and they're very formulaic. I think Steve pointed that out the last time we had this list. Um, this one has a different vibe to it. Um, and uh, I don't know, one that caught my eye, I thought it was pretty clever. You know, all of us who have seen this have noticed that there's the something is killing the children, number one, sort of stuck in the background there, um, which is kind of cool. Um, but um, uh, but a book with a different vibe um, that was already making the list this week. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, like I said, you know, I've said before, you know, it's so easy to do a woman in the wet red dress a variant. Which which a lot of retailers have done. Obviously, you know she appears here, but uh, I, you know I think it's all about the context. And you also see her glove. But I mean, <laughs> I just yeah, in, inserting her into the motorcade and Abbey Road, and then you know I think this is by the uh, something that's killing the children artist too. So it's uh, including I think where there's uh, I, I'm not really familiar. The, uh, what what gender uh, uh, that artist is, but uh, yeah, he, he or her is uh, 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 you know using uh, their own art, and uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean it's limited limited to seven fifty, so if it catches on, it could definitely do something. But the Abbey Road, the the yeah. uh, the Kennedy pictures, I mean, it, it, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a standout compared to the rest of the covers <laughs> that they have. Um, yeah, makes me smile. Yeah, it's a good cover. It's fun. It makes you think. Yeah. All right. Next, we've got the Marvel's number one Alan Qua variant. You know, so Alan Qua has been doing covers of this style. I call them the crowded room variants. That's not a real thing. I made that up, but it feels right. Um, I can look at his covers for hours. There's so much going on in them. I think they're absolutely stunning. Um, like any covers that sort of have a theme or a vibe, they'll likely get stale or old at some point. Um, that said, this is the first time he's ever done it for Marvel, Marvel characters. And uh, I thought this one w w w was quite interesting. Um, um, it kind of caught me by surprise because I just saw it pop up out of nowhere. Um, um, but I thought this cover was fun and uh, had a super amount of detail and uh, you know a number of characters that you could look into and, and study for a while. So um, I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on this one. This will make a great poster. I would actually hang this in, my, in one of my rooms in my apartment. I mean, if you blew this up, this thing would sell out like crazy. And yeah, you know, you know what I noticed in this? I mean, I'm a big fan 
of the younger Marvel, younger Marvel characters. I didn't see them anywhere in this. So I'm wondering if he's got something planned or there's something, some talk about maybe, you know, doing something else with like the next gen Marvel. Oh, that, that'd be really, that'd be dope. I would love that. I yeah. would love it. Um, because this seems to me to be more of the established Marvel yeah. character. And there's no Gwenpool anywhere to be seen. And believe me, I studied it. <laughs> not anywhere you here. can call this the uh, Marvel Diner uh, <laughs> issue. This is, a, this is a very New York City type vibe, you know? Yeah. 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 Super crowded. I like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Great I, use of colors, man. I mean, geez. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. It's I don't have it. Much detail. I'm tempted to grab one. I'm really, really tempted to grab one of these, but um, uh, yeah, super, super fun. But there's no Miles, there's no Kamala, and none of those characters make an appearance here, which just leads me to believe like there's something else planned for those characters for, from this artist. All right. Um, X Factor number nine, um, David Nakayama. I love his art. I really, really do. He's doing a bunch of these covers currently that are effectively negative space covers, for lack of a better term, um, where it's sort of, you know, one color on, on top of another. Uh, the one, the first one that seemed to really catch people's eye was the Scarlet Witch. Um, he recently did a Polaris cover um, in green. That said, I thought this one was just much cooler. Um, Dazzler, classic Dazzler, 70s Dazzler. Um, and it was a lot of fun, so I just threw it on the list. But uh, not clear how many of these were made. It's unknown, so quite generally the print run is unknown. Um, but uh, it's still available. Um, but but a fun a fun looking cover nonetheless. Yeah, I I I I loved it when I first saw it. It's just you know it's like the white on white with the the red hair and everything. It just it it it. it it pops and uh yeah it's got that classic like you said that da dazzler feel and i don't know how many um dazzler store exclusives are out there you know maybe this has the potential to to pop in the future just because there just aren't that many you know whereas you know i, I think we're beginning to see the beginning of a tsunami of miles variants even you know phil was saying last year there were none but you know now we're starting to see a bunch uh j just like you know wolverine and and deadpool <laughs> it's not not even store variants marvel just throwing them on every single cover um throughout the year so who knows yeah, I just love the line work on this. It's just yeah. simple, um, but also detailed, right? And it's not black and white, and you and it's you still let that line work, the outlining of Dazzler. I mean, it just pops, you know. And it's just amazing to see some of these artists up their game with all these up and comers coming up from Europe and over here stateside and. Nakayama's just like, all right, well, I'm going to raise you, raise you m one more, you know, and it's just, I, I just love these, these new X-Men covers coming out now have something maybe to look forward to and maybe buy besides J. Scott Campbell ones. So yeah, I'm with you, with you, with you all with this book. You know what this book reminds me of, which I shouldn't mention because it's going to keep blowing is uh, uh, the uh, Sally Forth number eight, Adam Hughes, cover, right. which is uh Wally Wood series, Adam Hughes early cover, which is just amazing. Very hard to find. And it's already expensive. It's a white background like this white outline, uh, you know, colored hair, similar persona. Great, great book. All right. Pull call back. All right. This is, this is Trailer Park Boys number one. Devil's Do. Um, Sleepy brought this one to our attention. So, uh, Sleepy, what do you got to say on oh, this? Oh, goodness. Why am I always in charge of books like this? 
<laughs> trailer Park Boys. I saw this pop up on my feed, and Trailer Park Boys has their own niche persona, people that love them. This is a Devil's Due comic. Devil's Due has been pushing the crap out of this. I think because, you know, what else has, has Devil's Due done recently? Um, this is their store exclusive, which is still available on their website. They did a preview book, which is sold out. This book comes out, I think, in June. There's a number of different covers, variants, etc. Classic, classic cover. Um, the, the book itself is a comic book, new creation story type of deal. So there is some content to it that's new and different. I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those super niche books that uh, could absolutely catch fire at some point. You know, the print run is limited. They didn't announce it, but, you know, I don't think this thing hits a 1,000, right, like some of these other books. I think this is far lower than that. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a fun book, you know. Really glad you suggested it, Sleepy. What is this like a preview book? What was that? <laughs> yeah. It just threw Phil, me Phil off. Look, yeah, like Phil's looking at it like he's in the show. Like, <laughs> is this a, is it, like am I looking at the show? It's just right incredible now? art. It looks like a photo. It's <laughs> it reminds me of the of the Tiger it's like King. A, it's like, a new <laughs> it's a new Josh Middleton style. <laughs> <laughs> he can do it. He can do everything. We had to have a Puma cover eventually, right? Yes. That's right. That's the same Puma that got Nico. Yeah. And Aaron. Um, All right. Uh, listen, the next this next segment was uh, in response to uh, demand from viewers. They wanted some ideas about books that either had future spec value or, or store exclusives that had done well. Um, so we're just getting started on this. It's relatively small um, this month, but we'll expand it um, going forward. Um, but the point here is these are books that either have, in our opinion, have spec value in the future or books that have done well um, as source of well since they came out. Yeah. Okay. So the first book is uh, Star Wars number one. Steve, you want to talk about this one? Sure. This comes from Heroes and Fantasies. They're a, a chain uh, in San Antonio. Uh, I uh, picked this up on a on a business trip a number of years ago. Um, you know, put it away in a box, and um, you know, obviously an ASM one twenty nine um, homage, um, and. Uh, you know, no, at that time, you know, everyone was doing a Star Wars number one uh, story variant, um, and you know, Boba Fett was still beloved, but uh, the Mandalorian had yet to come out. Um, and I think the actual last sale there, there's a sketch version of this, and then there's this color version. Um, this color version, I believe, the last sale now was 149.8 um, on on the sketch. I think it's 110. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think our, our, our goal in, in this section, like Ben was saying is to say, uh, you know, there are outliers, um, that do increase in value over time in terms of store variants, even though the vast majority, uh, have, have not, or have yet to, um, you know, one for it's still 110 140 is an enormous um but um i think as we go through we'll we'll see some uh bigger books and uh yeah so i just thought this this was pretty cool yeah i like this a lot i'm not the biggest star wars collector um, but this is one of the better homages to ASM 129 I can remember. I think this is really, really well done. And, um, yeah, who the hell knows? Could it go higher? But, yeah, I think this is a beautiful book. I like the book a lot. Um, when Boba Fett showed up in Season 2 of Mandalorian, people were scrambling 
scrambling, scrambling, looking for cool variants, cool covers of Boba Fett, and this was one of them. Um, and you also have to remember that Star Wars fans, um, when the 2015 series came out of Star Wars 1, there were like 100 variants. And people, man, you know, like, they made it a mission to collect every single cover and going forward two three four and it was just like wow you're just like bleeding money i felt like uh like today now <laughs> where you see tops.com they got like this project 70 or something whatever or 90 whatever it's called right like you're trying to collect every single cool 70, card yeah. and you're just chasing 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 but uh, i think a lot of people got suckered into buying this book and there's a lot of people that got left out buying this asm 129 homage um i saw this book selling for like a hundred dollars raw um when when that uh boba fett appearance came out oh. in mando so uh i like the appeal of it and i think it's hard to get 982. i think that's the, the the one thing that we're not talking about is the homage factor there are homage collectors spider-man one uh, Tom McFarland, ASM 129, Hulk 181, you know, etc. They're going to want that to add. So you get that crossover appeal of different groups needing to have that book for their collection. It's a great point, Sleepy. All right. So uh, the next book we have here is War of Realms, New Agents of Atlas, number one. Uh, this is a super hot book in its own right, outside of this particular store variant. This variant is 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 super hot because it's the first cover appearance of Wave. She's featured prominently here, as you can see. Um, she's from the Philippines. Um, Philippines have a rabid, rabid um, uh, comic book collecting habit, like most of us watching the show. Um, um, but um, but but a super pop popular character within that region of the world. And uh, and a book that um, has held up pretty well. It's selling typically around five hundred and nine point eight. Uh, the picture we here see here is the trade dress, but the uh, the higher sales are in the Virgin. Um, that said, the trade dress isn't that far behind. Um, uh, in a really cool book, I, I, I would quickly say though, if you're speculating on this, be careful. There is a second print of this cover in black and white from unknown um, with a much higher print run. Um, but these um, these books from Comic Odyssey in the Philippines um, are, are the ones that are commanding the the highest, the highest prices at the moment. Yeah, they, they did a great job with this cover. I mean, it's just, it blows you away. I remember when this came out and people in the US knew that it was gonna be released, but it was only being sold through their shop. You could get them, you know, through back channels or eBay, etc. At the time, we knew New Agents of Atlas was a hot property, but it was, you know, not going for much more than cover. Looking back at it, we were all dumb not to buy more of those. This cover is gorgeous. Obviously, one of the better covers, if not, it's the best cover for the property. An amazing cover just in general. One of the better covers we've seen in, in you know, the past couple of years. I mean, if this property takes off and this character gets hot, you know, this book could actually really, really run from where we see it at 500, which I know that's a lot of money, but by modern comic standards, it's not a lot of money based on what we see sell every single day. Um, so an interesting, uh, interesting book. Um, that if you like this property, like this idea, like this character, might be worth grabbing. Um, because they have some, they have some, like you said, they have some rabid collecting hobbies in, in the Philippines because they've gotten a number of great artists that are, that are native to the Philippines to do some awesome covers. This book, uh, Spawn, you know, they've had some great variants that, people want across the globe i mean i'm gonna screw i'm not gonna bother naming the artist because i don't know but there's a lot of artists that come out of that region that are absolutely amazing um absolutely amazing um it, it, it's 
it's a super energetic uh, comic community coming out of the Philippines. Okay, uh, here we have uh, Masters of the Universe number one, uh, the gold foil variant from Graham Cracker Comics. Uh, Steve, I think you've got some thoughts on this book. Yeah, so one of the things people have realized recently is that in the Invincible preview showed up in a number of books, uh, but the distribution of those books seems to be what drives uh, the, the supply of those books rather um, is what drives the prices. Uh, this is, is one of the scarcer ones. Uh, Graham Crackers did a, a non-foil version uh, of this for, for their store, but this is the gold foil. Uh, I'm trying to remember how many it was limited to. I, I don't think it was more than a thousand. A billion, um, Steve. <laughs> no, the, the gold foil, the gold foil. Um, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. 500 million. <laughs> um, in any case, they, they had this for sale on their website still. I mean, th this is like 20 years later almost uh, in, until recently. And you could, uh, and, you know, I, I bought one and it sold raw for more than that last 9.8 sale um so you know that's one thing we don't think about when buying uh store variants uh because you you still do see uh, previews in uh, in in the back of some books uh to this day but um unlike the books let's say in the 80s where you, you know if you saw those dc books that have the he-man oh is that your certificate? Cool. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, some of the books back in the day uh, would heavily advertise what's previewed. Uh, the books these days, they they don't. So, um, yeah. So th there's been a good ROI on this, and this is a, uh, I think uh, the the uh, at least tonight the example that goes furthest back in history of a, a store variant that um, that that popped. Uh, of course, it took quite a while for it to pop, but uh, now 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 try getting one and now try finding one and try finding a 9.8 for $100. Uh, you, you won't. It's, it's, so it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good lesson about these store variants. You know, most of these books will never pop. That said, as time goes on and these get digested, whether it's an artist that people chase, whether it's a character, there's going to be a subset of these books, a small subset, granted, um, that are likely to to really catch collectors' eyes. And um, you know, like anything else, it's no different than any other part of this hobby. Um, you know, those people who can pick up on those early are likely to do well, but. Um, you know, tread carefully. Uh, the buy-in at 50 bucks for a set of these is not cheap. Um, um, but, you know, this is part of the hobby today. And I think as time goes on, some of these books, um, you know, could um, could see uh, nice gains. Um, but, um, but who knows which ones in particular. But uh, anyways, we try to highlight the ones that catch our eye here. And we thank you for tuning in. Um, We've got, uh, we've got several other shows in the channel, so by all means, please check those out. Um, but we appreciate you checking in tonight. Thank you very much.